is Solar PVTV from Rome, from the event organized by NL Foundation, by Res for Africa, and also by EU Africa Energy Partnership. And we are together with uh, Vas Chenoy from Elf Energy. Uh, buongiorno, uh, come stai? Tutto bene. Thank you so much for having me here, Thomas. So, uh, we are in the sunny Italy. And uh, you are also working in the sunniest countries, uh, I think the sunniest countries in the world, in Africa. But first, uh, Vas, can you tell us more about your background and how come did you land in the solar industry? Um, I started working in Africa around 2002 um, in close collaboration with the World Bank. Uh, those days I was involved in technology and we were doing developmental projects between cities in Europe and cities in Africa like the Rome Kigali partnership. Um, and that's how my love for Africa started. Uh, in 2009, I moved into renewable energy, helping some investors develop uh, projects in Italy during the Conto Energia. Um, 2013, when Conto Energia finished, we decided to use all that know-how in order to build a renewable energy company in Africa. And that's how Elf Energy was born. Yes, so already you have quite a lot of experience, yes? in Africa, in the Middle East also. So could you tell us more, you know, what were your major milestones? Well, ideally, Elf Energy participated in the round two in Jordan, which as you understand was probably one of the most defining moments in solar in Middle East and Africa. Like a kickoff. Like a kickoff. And it was probably one of the toughest uh, competitions we entered into and we were really a small company. This was our first experience but we managed to go through all the hurdles that were set by the Jordanian Ministry for Energy by MEMR. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the top 24 companies who finished the process. We were of course 19th because we quoted too high. Um, but Jordan gave us a lot of experience in the business and we were quite proud to have finished the process itself, even if we didn't win the PPA and we were in good company because our prize was around the same price quoted by some of the biggest industry leaders. After which we went into Egypt um, we are one of the three companies that actually finished financial close in round one um, of the feed-in tariff of the Egyptian government, which obviously received a lot of publicity, some good and some bad. But again, another tough process after two and a half years of work, which we just finished. So hopefully we will manage to kick Egypt off quite shortly. Yes, because uh, there was quite a lot of, you know, at the beginning, positive rumors, yes, and a lot of publicity about the projects is in Egypt. And it was, you know, like uh, the most, uh, it seemed to be the most booming market. But afterwards, there was a lot of negative rumors. So what is your experience, actually, and how did you succeed? And how do you see, you know, the real start of the solar market in Egypt? See, uh, Egypt, like every other developing market, is a very challenging environment to work with. I think when the government started, it had very good intentions, but a lot of media focus on low tariffs in Dubai and Jordan put a lot of pressure on the Egyptian government. And that included with a lot of pressure on the foreign exchange in Egypt and the availability of foreign exchange led the government to figure out ways to minimize the number of companies that actually finished round one. That said, working in Africa is not simple. Um, we must understand that in a lot of these governments are doing this kind of a process the first time. They're working with IPPs the first time. They don't have, and smaller IPPs. Some it's of It's like a learning process. It's yeah. a learning process for them as well. And I think, uh, you know, everybody needs to have a little bit of more understanding. And that's, that's a little challenging because a lot of the private companies that are going to work in these markets have absolutely no experience in working in these areas. So it then just becomes a very big challenge of rumors, of discussions. It requires a lot, a little bit of calm and a little bit of patience, and you get there eventually. So, so when do you think that uh, the projects uh, that you have won will actually be built? Well, I think it'll take another year or so uh, for construction to realistically begin, uh, because there's, st there's still some challenges to surmount in Egypt. We now started development in Kenya as well as in Ghana and Nigeria and we expect to extend to another three countries by 2018. So for us, 2017 and 2018 will be key years of development work, and then 2018 onwards, we'll start to see some construction. And uh, who will be the off-taker of the project? Um, Elf Energy wants to be an IPP. We're probably one of the smallest companies uh, in the business, and it's probably very ambitious for us to think of continuing to own our projects. 
We have supportive investors and we're developing quite a strong board at the moment in time. So hopefully with all the luck that we need, we'll be able to keep most of our projects. So uh, you have quite a, let's say, great overview, yes, of uh, different countries in Africa. And how would you compare, you know, this attitude of the governments and also, you know, of the local business uh, towards clean energies? I think the governments understand that energy availability at a relatively cheap price is very important for their citizens for development. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, electricity and water are the two most important trademark necessities for uh, you know, countries to industrialize and to grow. Uh, however, a lot of these uh, countries, the policy makers also are affected by media pressure. And I think um, the glorification of a low solar or ro low renewable energy tariff is not a good idea because then constituents push them to lower the tariff and lower tariffs are probably not possible in every market given the market risks and everything of the sort. So, so we cannot uh, apply the same tariffs to um, other uh, to different countries, yeah? Yeah, and this is what the media does not understand because if you could do three cents in Dubai. Some media understand. <laughs> you should, you're, given that you're solar, but uh, given that, you know, uh, for example, Dubai is a booming economy. It's, it's one of the best economies in the world. It has probably one of the highest credit ratings and um, getting a tariff of two and a half or three cents in that market is quite doable giving, given the availability of cheap money. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't probably apply the same matrices to an African country where the cost of capital would be much higher and the challenges in implementing the project. And also the political higher. risk. And the political risk is much higher. So, uh, you know, there is no one size uh, fits all in the tariff business. Uh, also, the second problem is I just don't like the comparison between fossil fuel based energies and renewable energies because it's not, uh, you know, it's relevant. relevant. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, what happens is you're comparing apples and oranges, and uh, we must also understand that renewable energies are very good for places where there is no grid, and 45% of Africa has no grid. Mm -hmm. So, while you could uh, do a 300 megawatt project in the capital city, you would never reach this energy to the rural area where you're targeting, where solar energy would definitely be able to reach easily. And, but however, the costs are not the same. Uh, you should ideally compare solar costs to those with diesel generators. And solar is definitely cheaper than diesel generators and definitely pollutes far less. So I think the media needs to either give informed opinions or stay away from the discussion. Okay, so what would be your recommendation from you know, the guy who is coming from high-tech industry, who has quite great experience in different countries, what would be your advice uh, to the politicians, policy, policy makers, but also to the international industry, how they should work uh, during the next years in order to make, you know, the real solar boom in Africa happen? I think people need to keep an open mind, and this is, whether it's the big industry, the big energy industry, as well as the policy makers, I think the whole question is about the end game. Is the end game cheap energy or is the end game real energy? And the difference is you could have a PPA of six cents, but the company who wins it would probably have to wait for three years to build it to be able to afford to build it at six cents a kilowatt hour. On the other hand, you could give incentives and allow innovation because if there are margins, this allows people, this first of all allows smaller players like us to enter markets. And smaller players like us are flexible enough to bring innovation and take higher risk. And this you cut out completely if you are focused on tariffs and lowering tariffs and getting the cheapest energy possible. So I would just tell policymakers as well as the big industry people to keep an open mind and to not go with stereotypes and to just allow various actors to play in the market because you don't have one size fits all in these countries. It's not a developed country where you know, everybody has access to electricity. So I think that is absolutely important for the future of Africa. And uh, last question because the topic, uh, I mean, the main discussions today is about Africa in the year 2030, yes? So how do you imagine Africa in the year 2030? And how do you imagine you uh, besides the fact that you will be still young like today, and Elf Energy in the year 2030? Well, uh, I imagine Africa always very happy. It's a happy continent. 
but uh, in 2030, I do hope they're far more developed. It would continue to be a very young continent because the actual dynamic is going to continue to be the youth. So I do hope there will be more people educated, more people who have access to infrastructure like electricity and clean water and good health care. And I do hope Elf Energy can play a role in this by bringing innovation into water and electricity into Africa. So I do hope that I do see an African future for all of us. And in 2030, I do hope that we are still around having fun. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll build this future with uh, sunny and positive people like you. So thank you so much for watching. It was Solar PVTV together with Vas Chenoy from Elf Energy, who will be such sunny in the year 2030 in Africa like today. Thanks for watching.